Terrible times, it's you I see I put you first, that's all I need I humble all I am, all to you One way, Jesus You're the only one that I could live for One way, Jesus You're the only one that I could live for You're the only one You're the only one, you're the only one that I could live for. You're the only one, you're the only one, you're the only one that I could live for. You were always, always there, every how and everywhere. The grace of God so deep within me. You will never leave me. Today, today, the same Forever till forever Meets no end One way Jesus You're the only one that I could live for One way Jesus You're the only one that I could live for One way Jesus You're the only one that I art supply is today. Here we go. Let's count down. Three, two, one. It's rainbow scratch paper. You can use a toothpick or even your finger. Last week, we heard how Jesus was arrested for saying he was the son of God, even though it was true. On the next day, a day that Christians call Good Friday, the soldiers who arrested Jesus began to make fun of him and pretend like he was a king. They put a purple robe on him, 
They put a stick in his hand like it was a scepter. They twisted thorns together in the shape of a crown and put it on his head so that the thorns cut into his skin. Then they whipped him, hit him, laughed at him and spit at him. When they were finished, the soldiers led Jesus to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. At Golgotha, they nailed Jesus' hands and feet to a big wooden cross. Even though he had done nothing wrong, Jesus hung on the cross while people continued to laugh and yell at him. While he hung there, he would have been bleeding and struggling for breath. Can you imagine how sad and painful that must have been? Finally, after many hours of suffering, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, it is finished. Then it was silent. Jesus was dead. Let's take a short outrageous heartbreak. You have 60 seconds to keep on creating before we jump back into the story. Afterwards, a man named Joseph, who was a follower of Jesus, took Jesus' body down from the cross. Joseph wrapped the body in a cloth, then with the help of Jesus' mom and friends, he placed Jesus in a dark tomb. The tomb was like a cave cut into the rock. Then they closed the tomb up by rolling a giant stone in front of the opening. On Saturday, that very next day, the Jewish leaders who had Jesus killed began to worry that Jesus' disciples would steal his body from the tomb to make people think he had been raised from the dead. So Pilate, the Roman governor in charge, said to his guards, Go, make the tomb as secure as you can. Immediately, the Roman guards went to the tomb and made sure that absolutely no one messed with it. At least, that was the plan. Let's pause for another art break. Early the next day, on Sunday morning, Jesus' mom and some other women went to see the tomb. But when they got there, a huge earthquake shook everything. An angel of God came thundering down from heaven. With one little push, the angel rolled the giant stone away from the tomb like it was nothing and sat on it. The Bible says that the guards were so scared that they shook in their boots and they fainted to the ground. Now the angel turned his attention toward Mary and her friends, and he said to them, Don't be afraid. I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said he would. Come and see the place where he was lying. When Mary and her friends looked inside of the tomb, 
it was empty. They were afraid, but so happy at the same time. They couldn't wait to share the good news with Jesus' disciples, so they ran as fast as they could to tell them about what they had seen. As they were running though, something happened that they never expected. Suddenly, Jesus appeared right in front of them. Hello, he said. The women stopped dead in their tracks with their mouths hanging open. They couldn't believe it. The last they had seen Jesus, he was dead. And now, three days later, he was alive again and talking to them. They went to him, they fell to the ground at his feet, and they worshipped him. The angel of God was right. Jesus is alive. Let's finish with our last art break. Jesus is sometimes called the light of the world. In our story for today, Jesus' enemies killed him on a cross. It's kind of like they blew the light of the world out. But did it stay out? No way. After three days in the tomb, Jesus, the light of the world, came back to life. That's what Easter is really all about. It's not about the cute little bunnies or the Easter egg hunts or even the candy. Easter is about celebrating the light that came back to life. It's about celebrating that Jesus was dead, but now he's alive. Let's take a look at today's verse. Christ has been raised from the dead by the Father's glory. And like Christ, we also can live a new life. Romans 6 verse 4. You only have to memorize the second sentence if you want to earn a kid buck. When God raised Jesus from the dead, he raised us from the dead too. Now some of you might be thinking, hold on, I don't remember being dead. Well, I hate to break it to you, but we all start out spiritually dead. It's kind of like the light in your heart had been blown out and you were living away from God, surrounded by the darkness of your sin. But did it stay out? Not if you have made Jesus your savior. When Jesus came back to life on that first Easter morning, he defeated sin. Now if you follow Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You were once dead in your sin, but now, thanks to Jesus, you are alive. Let's pray. God, thank you for sending Jesus to die in our place Thank you that he came back to life, proving that he had power over sin and death. I pray, Lord, for anyone watching, if anyone hasn't accepted you as their savior, that they would, even this very day. Lord, thank you for your forgiveness of our sins. Amen. Thanks for joining us for this outrageous series. Next week is Easter. Make sure you tune in for our interactive Easter special. You're gonna love it. We'll see you there.